Hi, everyone. It is my absolute joy to introduce Dr. Alex Ling to you um, this evening. I think this is going to be a real treat for uh, not only for myself, but for everyone listening. And, and welcome, Alex. Thank you for making the time, because I know you're traveling right now. Thank uh, you for having me, Pam. Yeah, delighted. And just to give you a little bit of background, Alex is a, is a really remarkable man with huge knowledge. He's a he's a former doctor, former GP, now a functional doctor. He's also um, an archaeologist with a lot of knowledge about megalithic sites, um, an astrologer, an astrophysicist, um, and currently living in the UK now. I think. Yes, Alex? I. Yes, I am. So a lot of knowledge about, about stones, ancient stones and ancient sites, but also um, you've had a great involvement with frequency and understanding frequency. And that's what your products really are now all about. So, um, so how did you begin, Alex, on this journey with these incredible products, which we're gonna be talking about this evening? Okay, yes. Uh, I started actually 14 years ago, which is quite some time ago now. And my uh, interest was always, uh, I, I was really so searching structured water for quite some time. And uh, structured water, of course, is living water, which uh, is, is connected to all the streams and springs. And uh, so it's in its natural form. Uh, and of course, our tap water isn't because tap water is forced through a piping system and therefore it's very, very limited. Um, it's not hydrating us on, on uh, 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 the level which we should be hydrated uh, on a cellular level. And uh, so then I researched uh, structured water and I was thinking how I could uh, literally make a connection with one of my um, uh, supplements, which I'm using for a very long time in, in, in my treatments, uh, especially when it comes to uh, autoimmune system disorders like cancer and, and other uh, rheumatoid arthritis and arthritis. Um, so, and then uh, I needed to find a way how to use it. And the um, supplements that I've been using for a long time are frankincense and myrrh and gold. So in that connection, uh, an absolutely amazing combination which has uh, a lot of properties which are extremely beneficial to us. Um, so not only that they are a major anti-inflammatory, but uh, especially in cancer research as, as of late, myrrh has proven to be very, very successful in the uh, fight of, of, uh, against cancer. So it's uh, reducing the swelling, reducing the possibility for a cell mutation. There's all sorts of different signs connected to it. Um, and on, the only thing I had to do, find a way of making the uh, resins uh, water soluble. Now that sounds very easy, but it wasn't. So it took actually quite a few few years to come to that, uh, uh, to the success to, to produce water soluble uh, frankincense and myrrh. Uh, and finally, when I uh, mastered it, <laughs> Uh, it it was building a bridge basically between the frankincense and myrrh and the monotonic gold which I'm using, and that has stabilized uh, these two components so that I could introduce it to structured water and it was perfectly connecting, uh, and that was a breakthrough for me personally where I thought this is amazing. So now I have found a way for people to use it, my clients to use it, and the bioavailability was enormous. And that is the difference. Wonderful. So then, and, you know, it's, it, it, it's no accident, I think, that we are having this conversation at the very last degree of, of Pisces with, with, with the Sun conjunct Neptune here, all about oh. water. And, and viewers may remember that when Saturn entered Pisces, um, I did a video talking about, I anticipated we're going to hear a lot about structured water. But, but Alex, what you're saying essentially with frankincense and myrrh and monatomic gold, is your product, are your products helping to reconnect us to Christ consciousness. Yes, that is exactly the point. Uh, I've, uh, there's a lot of research which, which I've done on the grounds of ancient texts, 
And uh, of course, frankincense and myrrh always has been uh, very valuable to yeah. our ancestors, especially in Egypt, uh, it was more valuable than gold. And uh, the reason for that is that it was not just used for purif purification. Uh, it was literally, it had, had a lot of properties which would uh, allow us to uh, travel interdimensional. Uh, so there, there were a lot of uh, text which would suggest that especially myrrh is connecting to our GABA receptors in our brain and would allow us to connect our uh, unconscious, subconscious and conscious mind. And that is actually, of course, uh, um, very important for self-healing. So there we go. So, and that was really important to me to follow that path uh, from, from the physical body, but also for, the, uh, for our spiritual body, which is very, very important. Amazing. And so as well as the resins, I understand you introduced the love frequency into yeah. the water as well. So That's can you right. tell us a bit about that. It's, you know, again, remarkable. Today we have Venus conjunct Saturn in Pisces. Yes. Water with love. <laughs> it's just... Absolutely. I mean, you couldn't, it, it couldn't have been a better time than this year, which everything is about the water, of course. And uh, yes, yeah, so when we started to, to use this product, which was uh, now about 11 months ago, uh, it was an incredible experience for many, many people. And spiritually, it opened up a lot of people in, into, I mean, most of them were quite awake anyway, but it kind of opened up a completely new pathway where people had the ability to um, reflect on their life and also move on uh, with, without fear. That was also something which uh, myrrh and frankincense, of course, is stabilizing you in such a way it connects air and earth. So there are many, many aspects which are very beneficial for our spiritual being. That is so beautiful because we either follow the path of fear or we follow the path of love. And yes, so introducing, I think it's the 528 hertz into the water and as i understand it that's the frequency of love so that is already embedded in in the water which is extraordinary yeah. and it's, it's interesting you're pro i was so excited because i only ordered them on sunday evening and they arrived today and i thought gosh that's fast but um you have to take the water first i have the two two products here that you have to prime yourself with water so i took just before supper 10 mils of the water and then after supper 10 drops of the aquan and what i did was um i i doused um i've got a very simple dowsing chart that doesn't have values on it but nevertheless i i doused my frequency before taking the products and got a certain reading and then after supper and after taking the aquan drops i doused it again <laughs> and it had it had almost doubled and i thought that can't be right yeah. Yeah. So I tested it twice and I got the same answer. And I, I can feel now a lot of crown chakra activation. I thought, wow, that's remarkable after just essentially one dose of, of each this evening. Yeah. So this is tremendously exciting because, as you say, it's coming at exactly the right time. You know, with myself, along with other astrologers like Heather Ensworth, etc., have been talking about this is sort of the ignition point. This is the the start point of the real acceleration of the evolution for humanity. Where within yeah. hours of the of the Aries equinox, the whole new beginning, and then the total solar eclipse, big new moon, big new beginning in Aries. Then we've got Jupiter Uranus, which I've been yeah. talking about a lot as a kind of real jump in consciousness, yeah. a real expansion, and opening up in our understanding and our connection to galactic beings and galactic heritage and the, your products seem like a really powerful piece of all of that really powerful ingredient of, of this this it's like we're going you know we're, we're being taken up the ski slope and then we're just going to kind of helicopter lift from there yes i think you described it very well um many many of our clients who take Akron the first time uh, have very very similar experiences and uh, they uh even, even people who are not completely awake, uh, they describe this kind of tingling on the crown chakra and uh, they, they are completely um, uh, astonished 
how quickly it works. And you can literally also feel when the water, when you drink the first dose, how it really connects with all your cells within your body and, and hydrates you on a completely different level as well. So um, yes, it is it's quite incredible. So you're, you're, many people also experience a different ex, uh, kind of a more intensified way of dreaming. Uh, so some people uh, have to maybe process something within, within their dreams, uh, something which they haven't thought about for a very long time which is kind of in the way and stored away in our unconscious level. Uh, and other people just have beautiful dreams, which are very meaningful. Uh, and yes, it's all about the love frequency. So if people take it or when people take it, uh, we also have had a lot of people who say, uh, I was the only person in my family who took it, but my partner actually also benefited from it. And that is because our or water within our system, within our body, is communicating to other people who are also, of course, vessels of water. And uh, so that way it spreads out beautifully. So the frequency really is, is something which we, we experienced ourselves as well, um, where the love frequency is really rippling out uh, and making a connection to everybody around us. And that is the beauty of it. Wow. And of course, we infect each other with our energy. As you say, Alex, we can't not, you know, there's no barrier. So and high frequency energies, I know myself is much more influential on low frequency than the other way around. So we are those of us taking these products are in service to the collective. We're in service to humanity. And I've done a little bit of work. I interviewed Veda and I've met Veda and follow her work, Veda Austin. And she describes, as you may know, water as God consciousness. Um, yes. Yes. And, and therefore, it, you know, water is primary. Water is source, not just a resource. Absolutely. And so are we just kind of the vehicles to yeah. carry the God consciousness? We're just the meat suits carrying the, the you know, we are we are liquid crystals in yeah. this kind of this meat suit, but carrying around God consciousness, which your product Absolutely. helped to raise very rapidly. I totally agree. And I did a lot of research where water actually is originating from. And as you maybe know, uh, our ancestors uh, called the, the water also the uh, cosmic ocean. And that is because there is a direct link to the cosmos. So there's a huge body within our universe, um, which is a long, long distance away, uh, billions and billions of, of light years. But um, so this particular body is called a quasar, and these quasars hold an enormous amount of water in, in form of a water vapor. And there is more and more evidence which suggests that the galaxies, including ours, is created through, through basically almost like giving birth through a quasar. So, and that's where apparently our water is originating from because we carry the water from the cosmos. It would make sense and also ties in with all the ancient texts which I have researched. Uh, so, and of course, this kind of blue, blue, blueprint sorry, uh, of, of creation is within us. Everybody carries it. Everything around us, everything living is, is carrying it. Our plants, our animals. So the whole planet is, is just one connective kind of um, information about our creation and we all part of it we all are creators literally yeah and 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 so water is the great connector because it connects yeah. all living mm -hmm. beings trees yeah. plants animals birds because yeah. the water has just been circulated through us and i understand some of the water on earth is as old as 4.5 billion years old that's just been constantly recycled back to the galaxy and through us through the animals so you know, yeah. it, this would really just erase any kind of polarity between religions and nationalities and all of those things, because we are one, we are one consciousness, we are one living being, being connected by the water. Yeah, and that's where also the frequency came into, uh, about the hum, and I will talk about this in a little while. Um, so the hum has an enormous... Uh, frequency which connects us immediately with this source of creation and uh, this originated again from a sound which came from the universe which came back to the moment of create uh, the creation and uh, 
uh, it, it is, for example, if you wanted to describe it and put a note onto it, a musical note, it would be C4, like a lower C4, um, which is an instrument, for example, in ancient times, which I have used, which is a wooden flute. So the flute is one of the only instruments on this planet which can, re um, which can basically uh, 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 play this, this, this sound. Um, and uh, so I was fascinated by it and it comes from the gravitational uh, waves out of space. And if you measure it, and I have done that, uh, so then you, ex you exactly come up with this kind of note, this sound. So, and that's why I was so interested in, and I used it in many, many ways on ancient sites and uh, communicated with ancient sites as well. And uh, yes, yeah, so, it's it's like a whole study connected to it. Okay, wow. Okay, so the creation of the universe via that note of C hmm. is that like cymatics, where you you sprinkle sand on a plate and you get certain patterns? And did the sound magnetize matter to the galactic filaments, the galactic superhighways of information? Essentially, actually. You, you completely write the semantics uh, in this have a really important point because uh, it travels through matter. Uh, it also connects again with all the small water particles which are in within the universe, within our atmosphere as well on this planet and within us, of course. Yeah. So it's, it's like a supercomputer. Wow. And yes, I've seen on the website you describe it in that way as a supercomputer. So because it contains all the memory from all the billions of years ago. Absolutely, yeah. And we are all connected to it, we all know it. That's why certain sounds, like the hum, is so familiar with us. We use it, for example, um, uh, uh, women or, or men who hold a baby, for example, to just kind of um, uh, try to, to, to calm it. Um, they use a hum as a kind of communication tool and as, as a, a tool to, to calm the baby when it's in distress or when it's not feeling well. Uh, and that's like a natural thing to do. So, or when we feel a bit anxious or have anxiety, many people harm to themselves. And that again, kind of a self-assurance. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why we harm and many people do it without even knowing why. And, uh, and that has to do really with the, uh, the other thing is that the C4 node also is connected to our root chakra. So the root chakra, of course, is connected to earth. So it's like a way of birthing us. And especially this year, it is so, so crucial and so important that we pay attention and we are connected to this planet um, while especially the uh, eclipse is going to occur uh, within that time, which is in, in, in April. Yeah, yes. and it's it's particularly important, I think, with the very unstable geomagnetics we have, with the peaks in the solar flare activity and the instability in the ionosphere. It seems particularly important, bare feet on on the earth, bare feet on the grass. But that you're saying, Alex, that your products would do that for people anyway, without having yes. to bare feet on the grass. That's pretty much true. So it is connecting us to, to the 5 to 8 frequency, which is love, which is connected really to everything around us. But it also, it calms us. It doesn't, it takes a fear away. Many people say <clears throat> that they are felt soon as they're taking the aircon, um, really calm and, and, and quite uh, de-stressed. Uh, so and uh, and that's also a very, very important point, especially over the last few years. Many people got really stressed because of all the situation occurring around the world, and I think uh, that was that is something which is very important for us humans that we uh, are not directed anymore in in terms of fear, and uh, that is really the liberation process as well. So that we uh, disconnect us from this kind of emotion of being um being fearful about our life our future and that very very important to me yeah yeah absolutely. And, to and, and and humming as i understand raises your frequency anyway absolutely exactly so it raises our fr frequency but also it completely connects us with this earth so within the uh, eclipse of course um the duration which is uh, I, it's it, it's it's to do with many many factors as you already um, 
kind of hinted that the uh, there is a new um, sorry a new moon at, on this day, and there's also the possibility because of the new moon and because it's a solar eclipse that we may have might have a quite an active solar flare which yep. may occur yep. at the same time here on the solar maximum of course, and um, historically and and in ancient times this occurred in that combination before, especially in two huge events. One was around 5,000 years ago and the other one was about 13,000 years ago connected to the, um, uh, the great flood. Yeah. Uh, when this uh, happened, the, uh, the solar flare um, was responsible for a major uh, rapid ice melt. Right. So the ice was melting, then of course uh, the uh, the flood happened as well, and uh, it, it, it forced many of the ancient civilizations to live underground for a little while as well in the higher regions. I'm not saying that this is what's going to happen. This is about our consciousness and being connected and being aware that this planet is going through changes and we are going through changes as well, and we just have to adapt. We have to go and live with this planet and be in connection with this planet rather than being disconnected. Absolutely. And that's but if, unfortunate. Yeah, if, if everything is connected, which indeed it is in our universe, and we as humanity, or even a, a small dedicated group of us can raise the, the collective frequency, then we may prevent the more extreme events happening with the earth, because everything, you know, we calm the earth down, we send the earth up, we calm all that down. So, that is exactly why I, I came up with Aquan, because it was so important to me that we all are connecting, our consciousness is rising, that we are connected with Christ consciousness, and that, therefore, uh, we, we can make a change. And I truly really believe that very, very possible. I've seen this over and over again, especially over the last few weeks, where we had numerous meetings, and I was uh, giving a few talks, and we had this uh, hum experience which we shared with many people who were present and it was mind-blowing it was absolutely the love in this uh, um, in these <clears throat> places where I, I um, had the talk which was just last a uh, few days ago in the town hall in, in Glastonbury and there were about 140 people I think there it was absolutely amazing the vibration, the, the feeling of love, and everybody in the end just we were all hugging each other, and <laughs> there was such a love spread between everybody. And we were holding the sound for pretty much four minutes twenty-eight, so it was amazing, and that gave us just a little insight in how incredible, how easily we actually can uh, uh, can make a change if we just connect to each other. Absolutely. It's something I talk about a great deal in my videos, how, you know, we mm. just have to choose to raise our frequency in the way in one of the ways you're speaking about, Alex. And for free across the world, we can we can change the quantum wave structure. We can change our future. We can change our tomorrow. So I love, I love, love the work you're doing. I don't know if you're aware as well um, with the astrology that at the total solar eclipse, it is within one minute of exactitude of an asteroid called Chiron. Chiron is known as the wounded healer, as you know. So it's illuminating where we've been wounded, particularly in our victim consciousness in terms of how we've lived, but it has great potential for healing. And it's literally within one minute, you know, six minutes. So it, the potential for healing is enormous at this total solar eclipse, big new beginning. And so, so tell us a little bit about, about the hum and how you're organizing this and how we can participate. Yes. So the hum is organized through talks and also we're going to have uh, a website. This is, I think, the very first time also that many, many different networks, and it doesn't really matter what kind of background they come from. So there's no specific um, group or religion or belief system. Everybody seems to join. And I think this is quite unique. Um, so these kind of networks, and there are many, many of them uh, around the world. We had people joining from the most incredible countries. And I think this is the beauty of it. 
uh, that we all can connect and just leave our belief system aside just for a moment because we're all on the same path. We all want the same thing. And, um, and we're all connected through love. And that is really the only thing which matters. So we are organizing certain events and there are different networks and groups who will organize certain events in connection with the eclipse so that people can join. We also have a telegram group where people can join that way. Um, there will be all this information will be on our website, which is specially created for this uh, for this event for for the eclipse. And uh, so, yeah. So uh, sorry, I'm getting a, a wave. Yes. The website will be running. It's it's it's, it's working now. Oh, okay, the and website is already awesome. working. I've been told. Okay, uh, fantastic. That's brilliant. Uh, and the website, uh, the connection is uh, the, the URL address is um, www.hum, that's H U M. Yep, small letters. Yes. Lowercase, yep. Yes, uh, 2024.com. Fabulous. And as you say, Alex, local groups will sort of join in with the whole the whole event because this is happening. Um, it'll be seven twenty a.m. I think UK time by then. We'll be on British summer time. That's so, right. Exactly. Yeah, eleven. Uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. believe that's the case. So uh, we we have a lot of preparations still to do. We're going to give uh, a few more talks as well, but um, um, so. Yeah, that's PM. Sorry, that's uh, British summertime is PM. Oh, okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. So in Mexico at the time, that's AM. Uh, so we are going to be there with a small group of people. Uh, Sasha Stone is going to be there as well. And uh, so we're going to be um, we are visiting a, a, an area which is quite... <laughs> uh, quite an unusual area. It's called the uh, Zone of Silence. And uh, it's near Mapimi, uh, which is uh, near Durango. So that's where the shadow, the duration of the eclipse is the longest. So four minutes, 28 seconds, yeah. uh, actually 0.1 to be precise. And uh, this area is quite interesting because it has a huge magnetic field and it's very, very active. So your compass, for example, keeps spinning and spinning. Uh, so there's also a mountain region within the zone. And so we're going to climb this mountain, which is about 1,440 meters high. And uh, uh, so there are also some cave system and some uh, uh, remains of th some uh, uh, ancient sites from the Aztecs. Uh, so a really fascinating area, but mainly uh, uh, the biodiversity of the, the plants and the animals within the area are quite unusual because they are being affected by this enormous magnetic field. So there's a biosphere uh, reserve which is studying the plant life, especially in, within this uh, zone. So uh, there's nothing much there. There's uh, a desert. Uh, a de it's all desert, but um, apparently it has an incredible feel and also uh, a, a, no, a lot of stories which seem to uh, kind of originate from the area, from UFO sightings to uh, uh, extraterrestrial visitors. I mean, there are all sorts of different accounts and stories uh, surrounding this area. But for us, it is mainly the energy, which is mainly uh, why we're going there. And this, again, uh, the... Uh, uh, the hotspot of of uh, the activity within this this event. So, yeah, it's going to be wow. quite unusual. So you're going to try and so connect we... everybody at the same time around the world, um, which actually yes. it, it's not a bad time. It's pretty good for Europe and the UK and obviously America, South Africa. It, it seems to work quite well. luckily. It seems to work quite well that time for large That's right. so... global population. That's right. So we do believe because of its enormous energy field that this place is something like a portal. And uh, so the energy, we would like to start the hum there. And then from there, it will follow the shadow basically through all the other regions. And there are quite a few very 
um, interesting coincidence uh, because we have the, uh, the X point of the uh, eclipse, as many people know, and uh, uh, traveling through Salem. And, and I mean, it's, it's just like an incredible uh, event, which is so important. And what will happen also within this time, and that's where the hum kind of was, uh, uh, that's why the hum is so important and the C4 and the uh, frequency connected to it, is that uh, when the uh, eclipse of totality is happening, the in, within our ionosphere, the free electrons are spacing out slightly, so which means actually quite a lot. Um, so that means that this artificial grid which we are living in, uh, which is connected to all the Wi-Fi, um, our radio signals, um, the GPS, the satellites, everything, which forms this kind of artificial grid and actually stops us from being connected to the Earth grid, to our frequency, which we really should be connected to. So, um, and it means that this grid is actually lowering and, and almost disappearing com completely. So there will be some scenarios, uh, people think there might be GPS uh, loss and all sorts of different things, but within the spacing out of the electrons, what is happening is that we have a window opportunity to connect with our consciousness uh, and all of the humanity to the real earth grid. And that is the, the most important point of it all. Now, when we use the hum at that moment, we're reconnecting that kind of uh, connection we have with the creational sound because it's a primordial sound as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and within that moment, we are all connecting and a huge surge of the uh, uh, of this beautiful, beautiful energy, which is connected to five to eight as well, will go and search around the earth. Uh, so that is the beautiful thing about it. And, uh, and that's why the harm is so important. And so this will encourage a kind of feedback loop, as I understand it, Alex, because with all of those people doing that, not only are we um, infecting the, the collective in general, we're also feeding that back to the earth and the earth yeah. itself is feeding it back to us. So we're, you know, we're, we're just reinforcing that feedback loop of love and this sense of, I, I run a very, well, I don't run it. I just invited people to a, a very simple 15 minute, minute meditation every Sunday evening, um, which we do collectively. I, I don't lead it. It's very Aquarian. We do collectively with people having the most amazing experiences. And I always suggest to them, if they can't think of anything better, use the mantra of we are welcoming in an expanded consciousness of love. Yeah, which, exactly. That's beautiful. Yes, exactly. So, and yes, you're absolutely right. It kind of ripples out from that moment. It will travel with the, uh, uh, the shadow of the eclipse around the, 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 uh, the world, literally. And also this resonance is not just there within a few hours. It continues to resonate for 15 hours as intensively as the moment we actually put it all into, into this first matrix. But also it will continue for another 10 to 11 months. Strangely, it will coincide with the moment um, of the 23rd, it's the 23rd of the March, I believe, um, where the rings of Saturn will temporarily disappear. Not really, it's an optical illusion, but in, in terms of energy, a very important point, which many people believe it has to do with the end of the controllers having hold of our humanity. Yeah, and what, what absolutely is fascinating as you're speaking, Alex, because I always look through an astrological lens is, as you know, we have Saturn and Neptune co-present in, yes. in Pisces, um, and they, they come together very closely next year within a degree, but they don't come together to the minute until February 2026, when they literally sort of hand in hand, both step into zero of Aries, which I call the, the creator degree, you know, the very first degree of the zodiac, and it's quite remarkable. And that to me is really saying that spiritual structured water, the Pisces side, has now transmuted into a whole new cycle of the new human. And I'm meaning the new human in a completely organic, natural way, 
but it seems that your your products are really enabling us to get there much more easily and much more quickly. Yes. And what I've also got in my mind, I don't know if you've studied at all the dwarf planets, there's a dwarf planet called Selassia, way, way out beyond the orbit of Pluto. And it's mermaid energy, it's the wife of uh, Neptune in myth, and she is related to the shimmering sunlight and moonlight on the seas. I believe she's linked to the photonic energy that we're moving through right now in a very concentrated way. And I believe that she really is liquid light. Yes. Liquid light. And of course, we are liquid light. So your products are enabling us to move faster to the light body, it seems. Absolutely. That is very true. Uh, that's what people have noticed that suddenly by using um, Aquan, that they have instantly um, kind of jumped almost. <laughs> Quite an important part, uh, but, but something uh, which opened up a completely new pathway so that many things have been making sense, something which they, they kind of uh, um, on a personal level for their spiritual development uh, suddenly have kind of moved them forward and they're looking back on on their pathway and understanding quite a few things which were holding them up for, for many years maybe. And uh, so definitely it's, it's, almost, uh, it's almost like um, uh, they've been connecting again to this original source of creation. So there they understand why they're here, what, what their path is. And uh, it just gives them also that reassurance and um, the uh, self-assurance that they're not here just to be living this life, which is pretty meaningless. So they suddenly see a purpose and, and that's the beauty as well. So yes, for sure. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it fits so well with, you know, the end of the Kali Yuga cycle as well, because yeah. I believe that that is at the turn of the year, end of 24, early 25. And I don't know whether you're, you're also aware of a, a chap called Rory Duff, who is English. Oh. Yeah. yeah, because he is also saying by the end of this year, all of the Earth's energy lines will come into harmony for 200 yeah. years of peace around the world. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I think, uh, see, I studied uh, quite quite a bit the uh, the site of Megiddo. Yeah. Uh, of course, Israel um, and uh, or, or Levant area. Uh, so it's very, very interesting what's happening there at the moment as well. So there's, of course, a huge conflict. Yeah. And... Um, uh, this site has been within this kind of, let's say, warlike energy for a very, very long time. There's a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, negativity around this site. Uh, so from from thousands of years back, uh, I've, I've found text uh, going back fourteen thousand years and uh, describing how this highway between uh, the Arabic world and, of course, Turkey and the European world um, was constantly uh, uh, surrounded by conflicts and also a lot of sacrificial things which happened there. So Megiddo as such is like a huge mound and uh, 30 different civilizations on top of each other. So in archaeology, they have had a big job to identify all of them. So there's also a, um, a spring and this, this entrance where you can go and go down all the steps towards uh, the spring, the original spring. And it's quite interesting because that water, uh, so they have tried and tried for many, many centuries and many of thousands of years, basically, to infiltrate that water and the blueprint of the water to send out this warring energy uh, through all the water systems passing also Gobekli Tepe, of course, and all the other sites, you know, which are on the, on the same passage. And uh, so, yes, there's all of this, but I think this is a year where we're claiming back the purity of the water and where we're putting all this love back into this planet, that these kind of energies are basically being erased completely. So I do believe that we are, as humans, have this enormous possibility to change things. And that's what it's really all about. I agree one hundred percent. And this this couldn't this conversation. I just laughed out loud when I heard your two other interviews on on Sunday night because the astrology was just so perfect. 
for for what you're promoting at this time you know because i've been saying in videos this is that this is the start point of the real acceleration so it's so perfect what you're doing and i know you're so you source your water alex from two very pure sources chowswell and glastonbury and another spring in cornwall that are heavily mineralized as well naturally that's right so i'm very we are very very aware that the energies of the spring has to be perfect yeah. and uh also the purity of the water is is excellent so when we created aquan it was uh, instantly um instantaneously really that the water was of, of such high purity it would really um uh, fuse all the other elements perfectly together so that that was uh, yes that was just a perfect scenario so my sense alex and is it your sense that we are going to jump in our consciousness so much as we go through these these coming weeks and months that our past will almost crumble to dust. We'll we'll barely recognize it. We'll barely look back because we're on such a higher timeline of just creating and creating from love. It will be a totally different experience and reality from all that we've lived. I think I totally agree with that. And I see I think we're also seeing Glimp, a glimpse of it already happening. So when 2024 started, I think for many people, especially in Glastonbury, um, I spoke to many people who are, let's say, the elders of Glastonbury, and they've been waiting for this moment for 50, 50 years and more. And uh, they came to me and they said, you know, this is, this is it. This is the moment. And we all need to do this. And I said, I totally agree. So we all, all we needed was a tool. And the hum is a perfect tool. Aquan is a great tool to use as well. And we all are joining together. So everybody was just waiting and waiting. And I think um, I can say that for myself. Uh, I was waiting for this moment for 40 years. And, and with all the research I was doing, and, you know, probably from, from your own Kind of experience you're sometimes doubting and you're thinking is this really right and what am i waiting for <laughs> and and suddenly it just all opened up and it was just like like beautiful magic it was absolutely incredible and so yeah the more of us do this the easier it gets because there's a momentum you know somebody described the sunday evening meditation last week as as an we're moving together like an army of love an army yes. of love and the more of us, it just gets easier and easier because we we default to that that stronger frequency of love, which more and more people are feeling. So, um, and it's so Aquarian, you know, what you're suggesting is so Aquarian. It's all the people coming together for free, joining joining hearts, really yeah. joining hearts across the world. And it's just visionary, actually. It's so yes. inspiring, so visionary, and. You know, the universe has chosen you as one of the very important players um, to really accelerate humanity's evolution. So I, I think, you know, I, I think the work you're doing is, is absolutely remarkable. Oh, thank you. Um, I felt just really guided and uh, with all the knowledge uh, which I kind of retrieved over the last 40 years, really, um, I've met so many wonderful people who helped, of course, as well. And we all are... The same important it doesn't matter how much we knowledge we have and how long we have been on this path because in the end we all won anyway so and uh, and that is the beauty i have, I have such good friends around me my partner um who who is support, very, very supportive and has uh, put up with all this for many years 20 years uh so and it is it is beautiful to have to have people around you which support support it in that way but you're right the love which is now connecting humanity is on a completely different level it has taken us into a, a much higher dimension already so we're already there and we kind of opening the pathway for all of us and of course there will be some who are not quite awake yet but that's that's okay because we will just take take them by our hands and we just kind of guide them to, to the right place. And that's fine. And then now that everybody will know what to do. This is the beauty as well. So there's no ego here. There's no, it's no need for anybody to direct us and tell us what to do. We just know. 
And what's wonderful, and I'm, I'm thinking at the moment, I don't know if you're aware of the work of Robert Edward Grant, who has been doing some incredible work in the King's Chamber of deciphering what is written on the, the walls of the King's Chamber, which nobody had ever seen before. And he makes the point that those, um, those drawings or those etchings or however they were done were always there for thousands of years. It's only when we expand our consciousness that we can see them. And, and really what you're talking about here is the same process, that that connection of love with source has all, always been there. It's just we've yeah. been under a veil. And I, I think part of Neptune in Pisces actually has been the veil. Yes. The and once nice. Neptune moves fully out of Pisces, which it starts to do next year, although there have been many benefits of Neptune in Pisces, we lose the veil, we lose the illusion. And we, we get the clarity of that zero point of Aries and a whole new beginning for humanity. I mean, the water is an absolutely crucial point in all of this because it's that's where the, the connection is. And uh, no wonder that this year is a year where water uh, plays an absolute key role in this. So connecting us to this consciousness. Uh, I wanted also to just shortly bring up um, a, uh, an ancient text, which is also very, very interesting and uh, ties in with what is happening at the moment with all the royals, for example, around the world, especially here in Britain, because there's a lot of question marks, what is happening. So, and uh, there seem to be um, a, a few confusions. <laughs> uh, so there are some royals which have disappeared and some people who um, don't know really where, where um, some of the royals have disappeared too and if they're still in place and whatever. So <laughs> I got this incredible text which um, is called The Substitute King and I was talking about it on my talk just very briefly. But this is an incredible text and it talks about the eclipse and this uh, specific text is about 800 BC. Um, Sumerian text and it talks from the substitute king so basically whenever there was a solar eclipse lunar as well but mainly the solar eclipse which is more important um, they would put a substitute king in place or queen or both and uh, the reason for that is because they knew exactly within the time of the uh, eclipse that the energy, the frequency would change and would give the opportunity to humans to connect. And that is the point where they were fearing that they would be overruled by, by the humans who they were kind of enslaving and, of course, um, uh, manipulating for, for many thousands and thousands of years. So, uh, and that is the reason why they put substitute kings and queens into place. So they could go into safety, and after that, which could take about hundred year, a hundred sorry, hundred days before or after the eclipse. That's how long they sometimes were in hiding, uh, and they came out, and then they would take their place, sacrifice the uh, substitute king and queen, and would continue to rule. And that is quite interesting because just looking at what is happening at the moment, uh, very relevant. <laughs> absolutely, yes. Wow. Yes. So <laughs> that's going to be very interesting, isn't it? So, but it's just, you know, I have seen this really from the point of view of Pluto moving through the last few degrees of Capricorn. Anything which yeah. is a traditional elitist top down structure will crumble. And that includes, you know, what you're referring to right now, as well as government yeah. institutions, etc. That was going to happen. And the last pass of Pluto through those last couple of degrees of Capricorn is for the 2nd of September to 19th of November and then 20 years it moves into Aquarius so you know bring it on it's going to be it's going to be a very interesting year of, of, of rapid change I think from the old to the new the old system but but let an analogy I often use is you're in the theatre the scenery is collapsing everything's coming undone the actors are shouting louder and louder so the audience won't notice <laughs> but nevertheless the scenery is collapsing and we just have to kind of turn our gaze towards something much better and let that happen exactly. and it's it seems from your work, your your beautiful product, Alex, your vision, um, this global hum that you're organizing, it seems that you really feel this jump into higher consciousness is it is it's right here for us, isn't it? It's right here already. 
we were not waiting 10 years 20 years then it's right here now we just have to expand our consciousness to access it yes absolutely you're completely totally right uh and that is the point so we just needed a starting point which is the eclipse and and from there we just continue and we continue to rise and rise and rise so we, this is a time now for us to claim this back to take control this is our planet and we're not here to be controlled anymore in such a way that we feel hopeless and and everything is just about doom and gloom this is the point now of no return for us where we are moving into a higher dimension higher consciousness with love and this love will resonate around the planet forever and that is kind of the vision i have and i think many many people have the same vision because this is exactly what we're going to create yeah yeah 100 percent. it's wonderful i always knew it would come from us because that's the aquarian energy it's not going to be a leader or anyone who saves us it is coming from humanity it's grassroots up and so do you see alex or are you just going to wait and see what happens on the eclipse solar eclipse with with a hum but could you see yourself organizing um more hums as it were in future as we go forward to raise and raise and raise the frequency absolutely that's the point which we are trying to make and we have talked about it with many of the different networks as well uh so and literally what i have explained is that we need to continue and continue to hold the frequency but also rise it and rise it and uh, that is something which we would like to do on certain events like the um, um, the solstice or the equinox. We're just using uh, specific moments where the earth energy is giving us the opportunity to enhance it again. So, and I think this is the whole idea. So we continue and continue. And why not? Because there used to be um, the choirs who were in ancient times going uh, to rivers and lakes and they were enhancing the energy of the water by singing or chanting uh, to the waters and that's kind of similar a similar idea instead of singing or chanting using the hum which is a perfect connection to water anyway especially within us yes. so and that's the idea so that we will continue this of course this is just so thrilling for for all of us. It, it is so thrilling that it's that simple for free. Everybody in the world can do it. it, it, it and just God bless you, Alex, for the work you're doing. I, I think it's just absolutely, you know, absolutely wonderful. And really see how this this jumps us so quickly into into the new human, which we're really feeling right now yeah. is there is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we we close with your wonderful work i just wanted to explain that the hum is so easy to to create and people are asking me okay is it really important for example to have the specific note and i can only say uh we did we did numerous experiments and it was very interesting to see that uh, so one group for example had c4 note which we plate um, to the group of people and then the other group had no instruction at all there was absolutely no difference the sounds were completely the same so we all have the ability and we now we have a deep knowing which note we have to hunt oh it's just sensational it's beyond exciting i i will definitely be humming I will definitely be humming with you. And so will, I think, many, many millions of people um, across the world. And uh, I'll, as well as in this video, I'll, I'll put out reminders on social media as well. Um, and so get as many people as possible involved, because absolutely, why not? What's the alternative? Sticking with fear. You yes, know, it's absolutely. It's a no-brainer. It's one or the other. It's a, it's a bifurcation. It's a fork yeah. in the road. Yes, definitely. It's time to do this now and i think many people are ready to do this many many people are so and uh, i just wanted to say also that we have um created a, a different aquan which is infused with c4 note so the vibration of uh, uh 256 uh, the frequency just to help people along it's in a small smaller bottle it's quite inexpensive and affordable for everybody Beautiful. It has just been beyond exciting and inspiring. 
speaking with you, Alex. You have a very unique, specific piece of the puzzle and a very big piece of the puzzle in in raising humanity's consciousness at this time. And uh, I'm so grateful to you for everything you're doing. I know you've worked immensely hard over the decades to get to this point, but it's uh, it's payback time now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my my vision is very simple. We, I, I just would like to see humanity in in a much better space, and I think we are already moving into that space uh, with the love we, we have for each other, being united, and just taking control and being the beings which we're supposed to be. So that's all I want. That is that is my vision. So, and I think I share that with many many people. <laughs> Wonderful. Absolutely. Yes, that's what I'm putting out through the astrology all the time as well, Alex. So I hope to meet you in person one day, not too far from you. So, but just thank you a million fold for all that you're doing and working so hard for on behalf of all of humanity. So, so God bless you. And I know you've had some sort of internet, in, internet network problems at your end and hence the <laughs> camera zooming in and out sometimes, but the, the content was superlative. So thank you so much for your time when you're so busy traveling at the moment. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate you having me today. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. God bless you. And I'll be humming along with you. Thank you, Alex. Bye, Bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye. Love to you all. <laughs>